Father, we thank you and honor you and praise you for giving us one more opportunity to dig deeper in your words. Please, Lord, as you have done before, do it again. Speak to us all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, praise team. Our subject tonight, before you say I do, before you say I do, part two. Last week we dealt with part one. So I'm going to put a piece of the vows, the marriage vows on the screen for a reason. Because I've done so many marriages and I realized when I'm conducting the marriages and I, I stood before the couples, they just listening to repeat what I said, but they, I don't think they, that they clearly digest what they are saying because of the excitement and the anxiety and the flashing lights and all the other stuff and the camera and all that stuff. They just want to make sure they don't make a mistake. So since we're not marrying you tonight, you get the opportunity to review what you're about to say, those of you who are not yet married. And those, those of you who are married, raise your hand for me. You're married. Okay, good. I see some half hand. I don't know what the half hand means. <laughs> Man, if I'm married to you and your hand only go, go up half. <laughs> so let me, let, me, let, me put, let me put on. Here's part of your vows. Your vow says, I, whatever your name is, do take you, whatever the other person's name is, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward. Here's it, here's it. For better or for worse, for richer, or poorer, in sickness and in health. That means when sickness comes, you can't run. Amen. To love and to cherish till death do us part according to God's holy law. In the presence of God, I make this vow. That's a serious vow. Amen. You take an oath. I really think people getting married must review the vow before they go to the church. Very important. Very important. So I told you the other night that the divorce rate is high. And here's one of the reasons why many marriages fail. Um, many of them fail before they even begin. Dr. John Gray in, the book, in his book, Mars and Venus in Relationship says, because we love someone, we mistakenly think that, we, yeah, 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 yeah. That's a big mistake we make when we are in love. Love fools us up so much, yeah, that you just met the person last week and you swear you know the person. Because, because love fools you up so much that you mistakenly think that you know the person. Loving the person and knowing the person is two different things. Are we together? Yes, 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 yes. So one of the reasons why some of the marriage fail is because of inadequate homework. We meet the person, madly in love with the person, ready to go to church. And we don't know a thing about them. Uh, they, it failed because... We fail to make good background check. Just think about it. Just think about it. If you're going to give your life to this person, you really need to check their background. Amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't, you can't wait until you marry them before you check their background. You need to check out their background first. Marriages fail for that. Um, marriages fail because people are impressed with the externals, especially men. You know, men, men, fell in love with, men fall in love with what they see in front of them. You know that? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever they see in front of them, even if they don't know the woman can speak English or Spanish or uh, that no matter. They fall in love with what they see in front. The men tend to fall in love with the external size, color, height, sexy body, all that kind of stuff. The externals, externals. Some women fall in love with too, but more men. And the problem with external, I call it the hardware. The problem with the hardware is that it's temporary. Amen. What you see today, you won't see tomorrow. So if you if you're married to that today, <coughs> hello, hello. If you're married to that look today, you have a problem tomorrow. Because the look's gonna be changed. Is the church with me? Yes, hardware is a problem. Hardware. You, so some, another reason why some marriages fail, the software is not. You have the hardware, which is the looks. The software is the things about the person, right, that are not compatible with you. Their values, their attitudes, their principles, their views, their culture, their view of marriage. What do the person think about this? So, so, so before you say, I do, it is important that you go over some stuff. Number one, check out. What is your upbringing like? Who grow them? Did they grow up with their mom and dad or did they grow up with their grandma in the country? Or did they grow up with in-laws? Or did they grow up with neighbors? Or do they grow up with strangers? Or do they move from house to house to house? They have no, nothing called. All of that will affect the person in adulthood. Are we together? Yes, so make sure. If they grow up with their grandma in country, they're used to the mint tea early morning. Amen? And, they, uh, and they, come, they come to town and you give them orange juice. Orange juice is minty they want. Something, something warm on their chest. That's what grandma tell them. So, <laughs> so uh, all of that stuff is going to come up in the marriage. The church, you need to know that before you get married. You need to know what was their home like life like. Was there a lot of fighting in the home? Contention? War? Or the home was peaceful and loving. What was it like? You need to know. What was your childhood experience like? Did, did they have a good childhood experience or they had bad ones? Sit down and talk about that before you say, I do. Know what they have been through as a child. Are you with me? Because what they've been through as a child will come out in their adult life. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what hurt and pain or trauma did they have when they were children? All right, what traumatic experience they had. And to what extent is these things still affecting them? Because when you marry them, it's going to come out. Do your background check. Check their relationship history. Don't just marry somebody and you don't check their relationship history. What do I mean by that? Hey, I mean, how many relationships they have had? Before you. Yeah? You need to check it out. Because when you come to me for premarital counseling, that's what we're going. I, how many relationships you had before me? And then the next question you want to find out is what? Why did they fail? Why you never marry those persons? So somebody comes and says, eh, just a few. What you call a few? Fifteen. What? Do you, do you know that there are some people who get married and they don't know how many relationships their spouse had before them? Because the spouse tell them, let bygone be bygone. No, brother. No way, Jose. Because what you are today is a product of the bygone. Are we together? So you need to know what the relationship No, how long did each relationship last? Because if the person has 10 relationships and all of them last for about six months, every six months you change another one. Then when you marry me, it's six months. Are we together? Because there's a pattern. Check that out, check that out, check that out. And by the way, check out who ends the relationship, the other person or you. That's important. Did the person dump you or you dump them? Right? All of that needs to, be, needs to be examined. And by the way, were you hurt by those relationships? Badly hurt? Tell me about it. 
We call those baggages. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. Baggages that come over. Yeah? You need to talk about that. Um, uh, everything. Go through everything. Go through everything. Don't leave no stone unturned. Did you love this one? The first one? Yeah. Why you never marry that first one? Find out what's going on. Find out that leave no stone unturned. Check out their views. Views about what? Well, well, what? Before I marry you, I need to know what is your view about the role of a man? What is your view about the role of a woman, uh, of the wife or husband? So some people have some very strange view. Are you with me? Some people have some view from the 1950s and 45. And they want to bring it over in 2024. You need to check that out. What is your view of the role of yours? Because if they tell you, well, you know, I think, I think wife must stay home, have baby. Cook some food and press my clothes. Huh. And if that's okay, you know, that's all right. That, no problem with that if you are all right with it. No problem with that. Check out their views. Check out, check, check, check some other. What is their view about finance in the house? Do we work our own money and spend it? Me work mine and spend it. You your work yours and spend it. Do we share the bill? I pay light, you pay water. I pay rent, you buy food. I call that financial divorce. What is your view? Do you have the view that we merge your finance? Or are you not trusting me with your money? All of that needs to be sorted out before we say, I do. Yes, check out. What is your view about sex in the marriage? Do you expect to get sex every night? And twice on Sundays. We need to sort that out before we say, don't come in the marriage with no high expectation. Because what causes problems in the marriage is when the expectation is high. Are we together? Yes, yeah, sort it out, sort it out, sort it out. So get, guys get her view of sex and sexual satisfaction and, and girls get his view of sexual and sexual satisfaction. One of the biggest, biggest problems in marriage is in these two areas. So sit down and have a conversation and a good understanding before you say I do. Find out what is their view of God? Because God is going to be a critical factor in the marriage. Amen. So everybody needs to have a good understanding. What's their view of God? And we have mutual understanding of the view. Very important. Very important. And then, and then before you say I do, check out the, ab ab the ability of the persons to provide. What do they have to provide for a family? Oh, you want to marry me. Okay, so what do you have to take care of family? What is there? Because you can't pay JPS bill with love. Amen? Yeah, love and romance can go water commission. <laughs> so if that's all you have, that's not going to work. It. What do you have to sustain a family? Find out that first. Okay? What, ski what skill set you have? You're a plumber, or a, or, a, or, a, or a farmer, or a mechanic, or a teacher, or an accountant. Or you must have something. You know, God said to Moses, what do you have in your hand? Amen? Before you say, I do, the person must have something. If they don't have any skill, at least they must have some education. What's their level of education? Amen? You must have something. Are we together? Yeah, because no, you, you can't run. After, after all the passion and excitement is done, and you go honeymoon and come back home, you have JPS bill, your light bill, your school fee, there's medication, there's gas. There. And the problem with honeymoon, nobody live on the moon. Hey, but everybody go there and come back to earth. <laughs> Amen. So the question is, when you come back to earth, what are we going to use to survive? Are we together? Yes, yes, yes. Check that out. What do you have to start a family? You need to check out all of that. And then, very important, make sure you check out 
their traits and their habits and their practices. God, that's some of the things that will annoy you, frustrate you. What is the level of their maturity? You know, some people marry people, and boy, no maturity. Yeah? And women always complain about this. No maturity. What's their age? Amen? What's their age? You, 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 you want to make sure you marry somebody within who is your companion. Can't, yes. Can't marry anybody 20, 30 years ahead of you. Because that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big problem. Yep, 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 yep. Big problem. You, you, you are 30 and he is 60. That's a big problem waiting on you. Told you the other night. He's in retirement and you in excitement. <laughs> Saturday night you put on your jeans and t-shirt, one go town. When he take out his fast teeth and put it in a glass. <laughs> not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Can you see the problem? That's a problem. <laughs> That's a pro you can see the problem. Amen? And if a young person your age ever start to talk to you, and the 60-year-old man see you talking to another 30-year-old, problem. Problem, problem. Maturity. Check it before you say, I do. Fine out. Do the person drink? Do they gamble? Do they smoke? Though if, if, you, if those are not the things you want in a spouse, check it out before you marry. And by the way, don't, if the, if, let me talk to the ladies. If the man is drinking, gambling, and smoking, and you don't want any of that, don't marry him and then expect him to change after. Because the man will have a good argument. You marry me so. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, find out. Do, uh, guys, you're marrying somebody. Do they lie? Are they unreliable and disrespectful? If you're dating somebody and they're very unreliable, you tell them, come pick me up 6 o'clock and they come 8 o'clock. And, and being disrespectful. If you're dating somebody and you start to feel disrespected in the dating, then guess what waiting on you over marriage? Hey, here's a big one. Is the person selfish? That is big, 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 big. Selfish people must stay by themselves. <laughs> Marriage is not for selfish persons. Marriage says, I am taking care of your needs and you taking care of my needs. That's how marriage works. One of the worst persons you could ever marry to is a selfish person. So if you're dating person and your person is selfish, run. Run. Personal traits. Do they, here's another dangerous one. Do they blame others for their behavior? Or do they take responsibility? If the person does something and take responsibility, good person. If the person, if the person always blaming other people for their behavior, they are never wrong yet. That's a dangerous person to marry. Do they have a violent streak? When they're dating, they may not show it, but it will come out every now and then. They can beat you, so they beat the wall. Bam! Violent streak. Or they get angry and kick the cat. Violent streak. Or they ring up your hand behind your back. And even when you're crying, violent streak, you may not see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they have a violent streak? Watch that. Are they revengeful and exacting? Very revengeful. Anytime you sense those characteristics in a person, that's not the person you want to marry. Do they have a sense of responsibility or are they just free-spirited? Que sera, sera, whatever. Will be, will be. If I catch, I catch. If, if you detect that in individuals, you really don't want to marry them. So I have some red flags for you. All right? On a Friday evening here, some red flags. Red flag number one 
Age disparity, again, a good age limit anywhere, anywhere between five to eight years. Anything beyond eight years is a little problematic. So you don't want to go over that. You want to keep age within your, within your limit. There's a good Jamaican word called combolo. Anybody know that word? Me or you're not combolo. Well, yeah, you want to marry somebody who is your combolo. I don't know where that word comes from, but it's a nice word. <laughs> All right. So you, you want to make sure that you're within the same age group. Anything outside of that? Red flag. Are we together? No matter how sweet the person is, the problem is not now. The problem is down the road waiting on you. Yes. Number two. Red flag. If the person is rushing the relationship, red flag. Red flag. I was in Mandeville pastoring years ago, almost 25 years ago, in my vestry. One morning, one morning, a guy walked in, deck off with jewelry, about six chain around his neck, ring on every finger, blinging. You know his blinging? Blinging. He walked, I never know the guy from Adams. He walked in and he has a girl. Um, them times they used to talk about browning. Brought this browning in and she deck off to. And he came in front in, in the pastor's vestry. Uh, and the guy says, he says, he says hey pastor, we, we want you to get we want to get married. You know? So he said, okay. When? Today, today. <laughs> today. So I said, all right. Uh, okay, sit down, have a seat. So I took out my pen and I said, I said, what's her name? And he said, Babes, what's your name again? <laughs> and I said to I said to him, I said to him, when did you guys meet? And he said, you know, I said last night a session we meet, Pastor. <laughs> they had a session. They met last night. Today. They're in church, in, in my office, I want to get married. Are you with me? Red flag. Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. If the person lacks emotional intelligence, red flag. They don't have no feelings, they have no emotion. You're suffering, I say, I feel your business, I'm in a business, you get yourself out of that. Red flag, red flag, red flag. Um, if you're marrying somebody and they're always in debt, red flag. Red flag. Every day they're in debt. Every day they're in debt. Red flag. Red flag. Um, hey guys, if you're dating a girl and she starts to beg you money while you're dating, red flag. Red flag. Red flag. You don't want to. You don't want to date no beggy, beggy woman. Yeah. Oh man. Red flag. If you're dating a girl and in the dating per she begging you money, red flag. Okay, girls, 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 if you're dating a, a man and he start to borrow money from you, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. That means he can't manage his own finance. Red flag, that's a liability you're taking up there. Are we together? Red, those are big red, oh man, those are big red flags. Um, another big red flag is pa many past relationships. You want to watch out for all of those things. Those are red flags, red flags, red flags. Um, you, you're dating somebody and they don't have any ambition. They blame this, the system, the system. Every day is the system. Can't get no work because of the system. Red flag. Red flag. Everybody under the same system. Amen. Red flag. Red flag. Red flag. So before, oh man. So before you say, I do, you want to make sure that you are okay. Don't come to the altar if you're uncomfortable. Are we together? Yes, 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 yes. Are you okay with his or her lifestyle? Are you okay with his or her beliefs? Are you okay with his or her, the whole person? Because that's, the per that's what you're marrying to. So make sure. Here's a, here's a statement I'd like to leave with you. Never marry a person you are uncomfortable with. Hoping the person will change after marriage. Pastor, many things say with a, mm -mm 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 -mm. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. So if you want a good model of who a spouse is supposed to be, 
God, it's a fascinating. God present himself, right, as a husband. Did you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Watch this, watch this. Watch this text. This is a good model. God present himself as a husband. Here, here's Isaiah 54, verse 5. It says, for, help me read. For, for your make, you never saw this text before? For your maker is your husband. There's a comma. Can the church say amen? amen. Your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and your redeemer is the holy one of Israel he's called the God of the all and that's not the only text here's another text here's another text God gives himself a husband he told he told Jeremiah I'm gonna make some new covenant with Israel but this time it's not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt my covenant which they broke though I was a Husband to them. Is the church with us? As, 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 as. Also Christ is the head of the church and gave his, and gave, and he is the savior of it. No, hang on. Stay with the preacher. Christ is the head of which church? No, notice he didn't say Christ is the head of the Adventist church, Pentecostal church, Jehovah's Witness Mormons, Anglican, no, no. It just say, church. Christ is the head of the church. Hang on, we're coming to that. Therefore, read, just as the church, all those who call themselves Christians, is the church with me? Just as the church is subjected to Christ, so watch, so the church must be subjected to Christ as wives are subjected to, is the church with me? Whichever church you go, you must be subjected to Christ. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, verse 25. Husbands, love your wife. Look at the word. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. In other words, that he may, might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. So what Christ says, husband, the same way Christ loved the church, that he died for the church, you must love your wife to that extent that you can die for her. How is that going, how is that going down under the tent? Verse 27, that he may present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. This is verse 32. Read with me. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Never call a denomination. It says church. Amen. Amen. Amen? Whichever church you go, God expects you to subject yourself to him. Whichever church you go, Jesus must be your husband. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. Now, but is the church okay with Jesus? Is the ch ah, hallelujah? Is the church comfortable with her husband? Remember, I said, don't marry anybody unless you're comfortable with them. Am I right? And you have to check out some stuff about them before you marry them. Good. Is the church comfortable with Jesus? Uh huh. Are we willing to subject to his habits, his customs, and his practices? That is the problem. Hey, 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 hey. Stay with the preacher here, because I'm going somewhere. If Jesus is your spouse, if Jesus is the bride and the church is the bridegroom, if Jesus is the husband and the church is the wife, is wife okay with her husband? The habits, the custom, and the practices of Jesus. Are we willing to follow him? 
See, here's the problem we're going to run into. Here, G here's Jesus. Jesus answered and said, Jesus answered and said what? I am for, oh, watch me, watch me, watch me, watch me. All eyes on me, all eyes on me. For all church people, whichever denomination you worship under, Baptist, Methodist, Anglican, Adventist, Pentecostal, New Testament, doesn't matter which church you are. For all church people, Jesus says, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. Hey, hey, why am I straight? Hey, Jesus said, it is not your bishop who is the way. It is not your bishop who is the, who is the truth. And it's not your pastor who is the life. I am. Amen. No, some people substitute their church leader for God. Don't do that. Don't substitute me as your pastor for God. Because me and God can't come near to each other. Are you with me? I'm a wretched sinner just like you. Jesus says, I am the way for all Pentecostals. I'm the way for all Baptists. I'm the way for all Anglicans. I'm the way. I'm the truth. No man cometh to the Father but by so let us check out some of the habits of this man that we are going to marry. Some of the practices and habits of Jesus. And you have to decide whether you still want to live with him. I, I, <laughs> I told you, check out the man before you marry them. Amen? Yes. Before I go there, I want to ask a question. And this is not a rhetorical question. I want an answer from everybody. Are you prepared to submit yourself to Jesus and follow him and accept his practices, his habits, and his lifestyle? Are you prepared to do that no matter what they are? How many of you? Raise your hand. God, no matter what habit and practices you are. Take your hand down. Take your hand. Is there anybody here not prepared to do that? Raise your hand. Okay, good. Everybody's ready. Well, since Jesus is your husband, let's go check out some of the practices that your husband has. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm scared, you know. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared that some people will break off the relationship with Jesus when they see some of the practices that Jesus has. I'm just being honest. I'm scared. That's why I ask you, are you sure? You sure? You <laughs> are you sure that no matter what the habits of Jesus is, you're still going to stick with him? Okay. All right. Well, let's check out. Let's check out some of the habits of this man that you marry. Number one, Jesus has a private prayer life. And the church say, yeah. are you okay with that one? Yeah, 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 it's a private prayer. Here's what Mark 5, 135 says. Let me read. Now in the morning, when? In the morning, having risen long while before daylight, he would, when he went out and departed to a solitary place and there he what so if you're married to him watch me if you're married to him you will find that that most morning when you turn around early morning the pillow is empty yeah 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 yeah, yeah. if you're married to him eh, amen to where you go to bed and by and by four o'clock in the morning when you turn around you're alone in the bed he's gone where is he gone gone to pray are you okay with that Yes, 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 yes. Here's another text. Luke 5, verse 16. So help me read. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and pray. You want a husband who prays. And husband, you want a wife who prays. Yes, yes. Here's another one. Here's another one. Luke 16, 12. Now it came to pass in those days that he went out to the mountains to pray. And he continued how long? All night. Is it okay if your husband gone to prayer meeting all night? Yeah, this is the man. <laughs> this is the man you're marrying, you know, Is the church with me? 
Yes, yes. As long as this prayer meeting is gone. You all right with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not every night we have prayer meeting though. Yes, both of you go. But notice that this man has an active prayer life. Amen. Every woman I know wants a man with an active prior life. Are we together? Yes. Okay. Good, 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 good. So that's one thing we about this, this husband. Here's another thing. Here's another thing. Yeah. Jesus was baptized. Yes, yes, yes. Before you marry him, you need to know that he was baptized. Do you want a husband who is baptized? Yes, yes, yes. Here the text says, Then Jesus came from Galilee and went to John to Jordan at the Jordan to be baptized. We talk about that. Any husband, any spouse you're going to have, you want that person to be baptized. Verse 16 says, When he had been baptized, Jesus came immediately from the water and beheld the heavens were opened to him and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. Yep, so he baptized by going. Hey, by the way, you want a husband who baptized by going down in the water and coming out of the water like Jesus. Good. Verse, next verse, verse 17 says, And suddenly, after his baptism, we, a voice came from heaven saying, This is my beloved son in whom I am. Good. Are you okay with that? Yes, sir. You want a husband or a wife who is baptized, right? Who is baptized in the name of the Father, baptized in the name of the Son, baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit, and somebody who is filled with the Spirit of God. No problem? No problem? No problem. No problem. Here's another thing about, the, about this man you marry. This man goes to church on Sabbath. That's a, before, before you marry the man, check out his practices. And before you say, I do, check out his practices. Because this man that you have as your husband... The husband for the church. Watch it. What, what is the church again? All Christians. The husband for God's church goes to church on Sabbath. Now, are you okay with that? That is the problem. Now, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Preacher, where did you get that from? Here's it, here's it. Luke 4, verse 16. And by the way, by the way, I, I was not born a Seventh-day Adventist. So, this is the text that helped me to remain in the church. I was born in a please, New Testament church of God. My grandma used to almost own the church. You know, I'm in church from the day I was born, even before I was born. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the church with me? Yes, 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 yes. I never wanted to become a seven. Never in my life wanted to become a Seventh Day Adventist. They tell me Seventh Day Adventists are seven devil people. But it's a. It's one thing to hear what people say, and another thing to read for yourself. So this is a text that keeps me in the church. What does the text say? So he came to Nazareth, talking about Jesus, where he had been brought up as a child. Is the church with me? And the text says, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Watch this. No, no. And as his, this is a problematic word. This is a problematic word. What's the word? Custom. Custom. If you're marrying a man, check out his custom before you say, I do. The Bible says he is custom. What does custom mean? Habits, used to, part of his life, tradition. Is the church with me? Yes. He went. So what was his habit? What was his tradition? What was part of his life? How did he grow up? Went into the synagogue. Which day? 
Sabbath day, and then the Bible inserted another piece of information. It says, and stood up to read, which means this guy was not a visitor that sit at the back of the church. Number one, it was his custom. And number two, he participated in worship. Is the church with me? Good. So, 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 since you are wife, and wife must be subjected to their husband, and your husband go to church on the Sabbath, are you prepared to go to church on the Sabbath with your husband? So I became, I became a member of the Adventist church because of this, because of this text. Because I read a text earlier that says, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man come to the Father except. So I decide, God, any custom you have, I want that to be my custom too. Are you, is the church with me? Anywhere you go, I follow back at you. If you put your foot here, I put my foot there. You put your foot here, I put my foot here. You put your foot here, I call it steps to Christ. Hey! If you go, if you go church on Sabbath, I'm at church on Sabbath. If you go on Tuesday night, I'm at Tuesday night. I don't care where you go, I'm right behind you because you are the way, the truth, and the life. And I took a decision, if I'm wrong, Going to church on Sabbath is you lead me astray. Are we together here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not following no, nobody. I am following you. You say I must follow you. So I am following you. You go to church on Sabbath. I'm going there too. All church members, Jesus says, the church must be subjected to him. Am I right? Like wife and husband. Well, your husband, this is a practice of the church's husband. So how the husband has one practice and wife has another practice? That marriage is in, tr that marriage is in trouble. So, so, so somebody said, somebody said to me, well, um, the only reason why Jesus went to church on Sabbath, you know, is because he was a Jew. So I said, is that so? They said, yes. So I said, so he, so Jesus was following the Jews. Yes. Okay. So I said, Hang on, who start keeping Sabbath first? Jesus or Jews? Who, who start the thing? I, I said to them, as far as I know, stay the preacher. As far as I know, the Jews came from Father Abraham. He's the father of the Jewish nation. Am I right? Yeah, I read a text that says Jesus was before Abraham. Here's John 8 verse 5. Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, Before Abraham was, I am. Amen. So Jesus can't be following Jews because Jesus existed long before the Jews. Aha. Uh -huh. How long has Jesus, how, how long, how long has Jesus been keeping Sabbath? Is it since he came down here? Well, well here, 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 here's the text, here's the text. Come with me. I'm in John 1, verse 1 and 2. What book am I in? John 1. Here's John. Look, 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 look at this stuff. John says, in the beginning was the word, comma, and the word was with God. Amen. And the word was God. So the subject of this text is the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And He was in, look at it, He moved from Word to He. He was in the beginning 
with God. Verse 14. So who is that word that was in the beginning with God? Verse 14 give us the answer. And the word became. So which God became flesh? Jesus. So the text says Jesus was in the beginning with God. And Jesus was God. Are we together? So watch me. So watch me. So if Jesus was in the beginning with God. By the way, Jesus was even before the beginning. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, here, here's the text. Here's the text. I'm in John 17, verse 5. Jesus, the last prayer he made for the disciples. He says, and now, oh, help me read. And now, oh, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before. Before the world was. Are we together? So, before the world was, Jesus is has been, and always will be. So how did you say that he's following the Jews? Who stopped keep Sabbath first? Well, well, let, let's check it out. When did Sabbath keeping begin? Well, here, here, let, well, let's check out who start keep Sabbath first. I'm in Genesis. I'm in Genesis 2, verse 2. Are you there? Genesis 2, verse 2. Help me read. And on the... Seventh day, God, by the way, by the way, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. See this God up here? This God? John told us a while ago, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Right, right. So then we saw that G, that was Jesus. So here, this God here also includes Jesus. Am I right? Yes. So in the beginning, on the seventh day, God ended the work which he had done. And the Bible says, God rested meaning the word is the church with me the word that was in the beginning rested is the church with me and if we say the word became flesh then that word is so in the beginning Jesus is the creator are we together and he's the first person to rest on a sabbath not man not Jews. There were no Jews in creation. It was only Adam and Eve. Are we together? And they are our mama and papa. Yes. So even up there, Jesus rested on the seventh day from all the work which he made. So Sabbath keeping began with God in creation long before Father Abraham born. By the way, it's a divine, hey, it's not a human tradition. It was started by God. It's a divine practice. Bible says, verse 3, help me read. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which he had created. I want to highlight three words. Ha! I've never seen these three words in one sentence. So come with me. Come with me. Come with me. Then God blessed the day. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, hey, stay with the preacher. Stay with the preacher. Don't let me lose you. Then God, the text says, God bless the day. The day, watch me. The day is 24 hour period. Am I right? God blessed this 24 hour period. Well, that don't mean much to you. Except I'm going to tell you this now. The only time in the book of Genesis that it recorded that God blessed anything else was man. There are only two times God pronounced blessing in creation. Bible says, and he blessed them, male and female, and tell them to multiply and replenish you. Are you with me? So God bless them. God bless the marriage. God bless the union. There are only two recipients of blessing. One was the marriage, them. And the second time God blessed was a day. Ha! Oh, you still don't get it. Let me, let me put it where you can get it. 
the seventh day is the last day in the week. So why didn't Genesis say, on the first day, God bless it? There's no mention of God blessing the first day, or the second day, or the third day, or the fourth day, or the fifth day, or the sixth day. So why does God single this one out to bless it? Because I have people say, well, God bless all the day. No. No. No, at least not in my Bible. I don't know if your Bible has it. God single out this 24 hour period and put a, what does it mean by he bless the day? Just think about it. God, what, what did you do to the day that you call blessed? That's a homework for you. But he put a blessing on that period of time. Is the church with me? Is the church with me? And then, and then, and then the Bible says, and then he sanctified that period of time. What does that mean? Sanctify. It means to clean up. Clean up. Cleanse. Purify. Sanitize. Is the church with me here? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so some, so, hey, something about this day is special to the creator. Because he's doing some things on this day that he passed six other days and didn't do it to them. Some, he sanctified it. He may, hey, he clean it up. Sanitize it. Purify it. Is the church with me? Uh, from, uh, and then the Bible says, and then he rested on it. And that rest, and that word don't make no sense to me. God rested on it. It make no sense. Because I wrote, I read Isaiah. Isaiah says, hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard that God never get tired, neither grow weary? I, and I could tell God, I said, God, I don't understand why you rest. Because, because the only work you do with your hand is when you're making man. Everything else you spoke. Ha! How can you be? How can you be resting? I can't tired. You're tired because you just spoke. The Bible says he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood. And then at the end of six days, you're resting. It can't be resting because you're tired. It is resting because he's setting up a pattern, an example for all creation. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why he rest. And that's why he started it from way when your mama and your papa were together. Creation. No, watch this. I'll soon send you home. But just, can I get just five more minutes? I'll soon send you home. There's, hang on. There's something, let me talk to the church and to those watching online. There is something about the Sabbath. See, some people, some people in Adventist, some people in the Adventist church, let me turn it back to the Adventist people. So, some people in Adventist church, they take over the Sabbath as if it is theirs. The Sabbath is not yours. Watch me, watch me. When the children of Israel went to Egypt. They were down there 430 years under oppression. And so they lost sight of the Sabbath because they have to work Monday, Tuesday, right through. Pharaoh would kill them with lick. So they have to work as slaves. So they lost sight of the Sabbath. Are you with me? By the time God brought Moses up and bring them out, they don't have a clue about Sabbath. They lost Sabbath years ago. God brought them, watch the preacher. God brought out his children out of Egyptian lifestyle. Are you with me? Carry them through the Red Sea. Baptize them. We talked about that the other night. Baptize them in the Red Sea and set them towards the promised land. After he baptized them in the Red Sea, the very next stop they made was Mount Sinai. 
And at Mount Sinai, God called up Moses to say, Moses, I have a set of commandments I want to give you to the people who are marching to Zion. Hello, somebody. These are the standards they must live by since they have become children of the living God. They can't lie, they can't steal, they can't commit to the church with me. But they didn't, and in it is a commandment to remember the seventh day. But watch this, watch this. But they are in a wilderness. They don't know which day is Friday, Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday. Because there's no cell phone, there's no almanac, there's no calendar, there's no nothing. So they have no way to determine which day is Saturday from which day is Sunday. Is the church with me? Yes. yes. So what do you think God did? Huh. What, what, watch God. God knows the best way to teach people is to use food. They won't forget it. <laughs> so God, God decided that he's going to send manna from heaven. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they like that. Right? So Moses said, so manna came down and God said to Moses, Moses, I'm going to send manna from heaven every day of the week. But let the people know that when Sabbath come, the bakery in heaven close. <laughs> Let the, let the people know that when the seventh day come, ain't no manna coming down. So I'm going to send double portion on the Friday. So they can take up enough for both Friday and Sabbath. So watch it. So then Moses said to them, eat that you eat today. I'm in Exodus 16, 25. Eat that you eat today for today is a Sabbath. Sabbath what? To the Lord. Today you will not. Help me read. You will not find it in the field. Verse 26. Six days you shall gather it. But on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will be none. Why? Why? God resting. Amen. Have none rest. Can you imagine this stuff? So watch me. So, 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 watch me. So by the rhythm. The rhythm in the week, one, two, three, four, five, double portion on the sixth day, none on this day. One, two, three, four, five, double portion on the sixth day, none on this day. So because of the rhythm of the falling of the manna, they were able to detect which day is it. Ah, so God replaced the Sabbath back in their lives. Is the church with me? There's something about the Sabbath and God. I'll soon show you why. Soon. And by the way, you will know why the devil wants to get rid of it. It is the only commandment that gives devil trouble. You know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only commandment that gives devil trouble. So God put it in, in, the, in the law. Here's it. Here's it. Hey, let me read. The law says what? Remember. So God, God said, Moses, come up here. Let me write it. Stop. You may forget it. Let me write it on stone, not on paper. Stone. Stone. And God took out his finger and wrote it on stone. Burn it like a laser into the rock. Amen. And give it to Moses. And number four says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it what? Okay. And you wonder, why did all the other commandments? Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. When you reach this one, God break from the thou shalt not. And you remember. Porque. Somehow, God foresaw that down the road, the devil would try to wipe it out. And that's why God says, when you have an option between two choices, remember the one I set up. Remember. Well, if you forget what God says, you must remember you're at the own risk not only did God says remember it he says he says six days you shall labor and do your work but the seventh day watch it read for me but the seventh day is a Sabbath off it is not Adventist Sabbath so don't claim it it's not yours it belongs to watch me it is a property of God are we together God made it holy. So whether you rest or no rest, you know, God still make it holy. Whether you worship or no worship, God still make it holy. Whether you recognize it or not, God still make it holy. It is a Sabbath 
of the Lord. Hey, don't, don't come to my house today and this is tomorrow. God, tomorrow is my Sabbath. Wrong. You don't have no Sabbath. It is the Sabbath that belongs to God. It's a period of time that is God's time. Are we together? Yes, God's time. And, and, and so God gave the reason why he asked us to, to, to worship. He says, for, you see the word for? One thing I like about God, you know, he don't have to give no reason. He can just give commandment, but he still go ahead and give reason. He says, for, I'm asking you to do that. For, in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all them is, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath, and then he do something to it. Hallowed it, make it holy. Is the church with me? Yes. And if God does so, here, here let, let me ask you a question. Why, I'm sending you home now. Why, why is the Sabbath so important to God? What's going on? Why not Wednesday or Tuesday? Why does he single out this day for himself? Sanctified and blessed it and hollow it and then burn it in the rock to tell his people to remember that day. What is so significant about it? Because for people in Portmore, ain't no difference, they're gonna mark it. So, so, so I, I won't. Why is heaven, hey, why is heaven so consumed with Sabbath, so important to God, and down here we don't treat it with no respect? Why? So I went digging to find out what it is about God and Sabbath, and stumbled on this text in Ezekiel. Oh, holy moly. Are you ready for this? Yeah, 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 yeah. God raise up Ezekiel. Go to Israel and tell them. To hollow. Help me read. Everybody hollow. My, what the word hollow mean? Make it holy. Respect my Sabbath. Amen. Respect whose Sabbath? My Sabbath. Yes, yes, yes. Don't claim what belongs to God. God will put you in trouble for that. Hollow my Sabbaths. And they, help me read slowly, and they will be a what? A sign, a sign. Hey, they will be a sign between me, God, and you, a sign for what, Jesus? That you may know that I am the Lord your God. Holy moly. Let's break this one down quickly. God says, now I understand why it's so important to him. God says, tell the church, my wife, ha, the Pentecostals, the New Testament, the Baptists, the Adventists, the Anglican and Methodist, tell the church, tell the church for me. That the Sabbath I gave them, my Sabbath, as a sign between me and them, so that they may know that I am the Lord their God. Oh, you still don't get it. Let me put it where you can get it. Move, remove the sign, and the church can't be sure who is the true and living God. <laughs> now you know why that rascal called the devil set up churches with preacher preaching that the sign is done away with. With sign. The sign that God set up so that people may know that he's a true and living God. Devil want the sign to move away with so he can present himself as God. That 
That's why God is so particular. It's a sign. So you just take it as another day. But in heaven, it's a sign that I give the church that they may know. Because you, hey, hey, hey. See, one of the, hey, 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 hey. One of the big problems with the church back then is idolatry. Are you with me? Every day, God and them, they find, they find other God, find other God, find other God. Every day they have other God. God says, okay, I'm going to fix this thing up. I'm going to give them the Sabbath so that they may know that I am their true and living God. And then the devil has the audacity to send preachers to tell the church that the sign that God give to identify the true and living God is done away with. And the whole world by it hook. I tell you, hell will be filled with church people. Not because they are bad and wicked, but they are subject of disease. So Ezekiel got up and Ezekiel preached it. The Lord God says, I gave you my Sabbath as a sign between me and you. So that you, so God, you couldn't give me something else. I gave you my Sabbath as a sign between me and you. That you may know that I am the Lord, your God. When you respect God's Sabbath and come to church, you are recognizing that he is the true and living God. It's not a day that you're keeping. No, 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 no. You're saying, God, I recognize you as a true and living God. If you miss it, this is Ezekiel 20, verse 20. If you miss it, Ezekiel has another text for you. Here's it, here's it. Ezekiel 20, verse 12. Here's it coming again. More, help me read, help me read. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath. Here's it coming again. To be what? A sign between me and them that they may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. A lot of Adventists don't even know this. They just grow up in church and the grandma says, go on to church and you go on to church. No, it's not a day. So, so by the way, by the way, didn't they say that when Jesus came, he put an end to the sign? <laughs> Wasn't Jesus the end of the Sabbath? Can you imagine there are churches with preachers who tell the brethren that Jesus, who's the one who started it in creation, came here and nailed it to the cross, the same thing he started. And the whole world by it hook, line, and sinker. So they said, they said Jesus was the end of the Sabbath. When Jesus came and died on Calvary's cross, Sabbath done away with. Well, obviously, Paul never get the memo. This is, this, is, <laughs> this is Acts chapter 17, verses 1 and 2. This is long after Jesus died, resurrected, and gone back to heaven. Is the church with me? Yes, yes. The Bible says, way down in Acts 17. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollon Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, there were, there, where there was a synagogue of the Jews, verse 2. Then read this stuff. Then Paul... Help me read. Then Paul, as his custom was, do you feel a feeling of deja vu here? Where did we hear that a while ago? Jesus, as his custom was, now I'm reading Acts. Paul, as his custom was, I'm going to add my name, O'Connor, as his custom was, follow any custom Jesus has, I'm going to follow it too. The apostle Paul had the same custom. What's the custom? The Bible says, he went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scripture. I'm in verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the, oh, the who? 
didn't they say the Sabbath was for Jews? Well, look what the text says. After the Jews left, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them. The next Sabbath. Half of hell will be church people. Not because they're bad and wicked and evil. No, decent, honorable, respectable church people who were victims of deception. Because they don't read Bible for yourself. The Gentiles beg for the next. Watch it. And verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came the almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So before I go, somebody, I hear somebody down there. All right, pastor, I get the message. I get the message. But before you go, can you help me? Which day really is the Sabbath? Because the Bible didn't say Saturday. Can I, can I share that and then send you home? Is that all right? Let me, let me talk to the wives. Wives, are you still willing to follow this husband? So, so they said, oh, oh, we know, because it could be Sunday, it could be Monday. Watch, watch me now, watch me. Let me talk to the people online. God is too wise to name to name the days of the week. So rather than naming the day, God number them. So the evening and the morning were they? That's what is in Bible. You didn't see Sunday. <laughs> evening and the morning were they? Second day, evening and morning. God is too wise to name it. No, no. God number them. Rather than name them. So that's why God said, remember the servants. Are we together? So, so how do you know which day is the Sabbath? Well, here is it. I'm in Luke. What book am I in? Luke 50, 23, 52. Here's what the text says. So this is, this is the evening when they crucified Jesus. What evening was that again? Good Friday. Bible didn't say Good Friday. No, there's no Good Friday in the Bible. If you find one, let me know. Here's, so here's it. Verse 52. They took the body down, Christ's body is hanging on the cross. This man went to Pilate and begged for the body of Jesus. Verse 52. Are you there? Verse 53. And he took it down, wrapped it in linen, laid it in the sepulchre of the grave that was hewn in stone where it was never a man was laid. Verse 54. And that day when they took the body off the cross and put it in the tomb, the text says that day was the what? Preparation day. You'll never see Friday in Bible. The Bible says it was a preparation. Preparation means prepare for Sabbath. It says it was a preparation day, comma. And then it says, and the Sabbath day drew on. So we know that the day next. Are we together? Yes, but that's not, that's not convincing enough. So let me give you some more. Verse 55. The women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after, and they beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. So when they crucified Jesus, they took the body down off the cross. You may not know this, but they took the body down on the cross before sunset Friday evening. Because the, these Jews, these Pharisees were strict. You can't even leave your, your pants hanging on a line. You have to, much less criminals up there. So they have to take off the three criminals off the cross. Before sunset. So that's why they, they took down the body. That's why when they went to take the body of Jesus, he was, look at what the Bible says. The, 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 the Bible says he was still, uh, um, he was dead because the other two were still struggling. But Christ gave up the ghost and died. Has the church with me? Good. So the Bible says, they, they, watch this, watch this. They pierced his side and out of it comes water. So they took the body down because he was dead, placed it in a tomb. The women 
Mary, the mother of Christ, Mary Magdalene, and some of them, they saw everything, and they realized, oh my God, they are going to bury Jesus without embalming the body. Is the church with me? So they leave the cross, run home, sunset Friday evening, to try make up some spice, embalming spice, to rush, come back to the body, to embalm it before they put it in the tomb. Is the church with me? Good, 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 good. No, verse 56. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments. When they went home to prepare the spices and ointments. But when they went home to prepare it, Sabbath catch them at home. So the Bible says, and they rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So Sabbath catch them. They dare not come with no spice during the Sabbath. Because those people who kill Christ will kill them. So they stay, watch me. So they stay home. During the Sabbath, are you with me? Yes. yes. And they are anxious for Sunday morning. Hoping that the body don't start to rot. So the text says, now on the first day of the week. Didn't say Sunday. It says what? First day of the week. Very. <laughs> they didn't sleep last night. Very early in the morning. They, who is the they? The women and certain other women with them came to the tomb with the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone roll away from the tomb. Then they went in and did not find the body of Jesus. What morning was this? First day of the week. First day of the week. What day do all the churches say Jesus rose? Sunday, am I right? Everybody say rose on. But Bible says that day is. So if the world's Sunday is first day, then the world's Monday has to be. And the world's Tuesday has to be. And the world's Wednesday has to be. And the world's Thursday has to be. And the world's Friday has to be. And the world's Saturday has to be. So if you believe Jesus died on Friday and rose on Sunday, then you must believe that Saturday is the seventh day of the week. So I'm finished. There are two institutions that God is going to come on your quiz. So remember, there are only two things that God bless in creation. Marriage and the Sabbath. Is the church with me? No, I have good news and bad news. Which one you want first? Bad one. I'll give you the bad one first. I know it was a bad one, no, so I line it up because I know you want a bad one first. Here's the bad one. The marriage. The marriage. There's bad news about marriage. Here's it. Here's, here's bad news. I'm in Matthew 22, verse 29. For in, help me read. Here's the bad news. For in the resurrection, they neither marry nor giving into marriage, but are like Bad news, there will be no more marriages in heaven. So enjoy it down here. Bad news. Don't look so sad. Don't look so sad. Here's why I, don't look, why I tell you don't look so sad. Paul says, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither hath it entered the heart of men. What God has in store. Amen. Million times better than the heartbroken marriages that you have. That's, that's a bad news. You want the good news now? This is the good news. There are two institutions that God bless. One will end when you die. Here's good news. The good news is that the other one will go to heaven. Or if you're sleeping, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. If you're sleeping, wake up. Sab hey, marriage will end on earth. 
Sabbath keeping will continue in the new earth. Hey, so those who have a problem with Sabbath here, I don't know how you're going to fit up there. Where did you get this madness from, preacher? Well, here's the text. Here's the text. I'm in Isaiah 66. I'm in what? Isaiah 66, 22. Read for me. For as the new heavens and what? New earth. How many of you plan to go new earth? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you plan to go new earth, then get this. Before you say, I do, and say, Lord, take me home, take me home, take me home. Before you say, take me home, learn this. In the new earth which I will make shall, shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants and your name remain. Verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon, by the way, new moon it comes every month. From one month to another. And from one, and from one, and from one Sabbath to another shall what? All flesh come to worship before me, says the Lord. Where? In the new earth. So tomorrow morning when I come to church, I'm not following no tradition. No, no. I am rehearsing for the new earth. Now you know why that devil don't want you to keep Sabbath. New earth. Let me talk to the Adventists. Don't keep no Sabbath because your mama tell you to. Keep Sabbath because you understand it's a sign between you and God that he is your God. Keep Sabbath because you are practicing for the new earth. Are you with me? So you start practice from down here. Want to go to heaven and rest. Sabbath keeping will be in. Watch this. It starts in the beginning and you will continue straight throughout eternity. I'm done. She is my good friend. So the only thing left for me to do. As I close this, I know it may be a little challenging for some of my friends, particularly friends who have been honest, dedicated Christians in other denominations who have served in God the best way they can. I'm not worried for you, no, because Jesus says, if you are my sheep, you will hear my voice. And you will come. I, I asked the conference to give me a big scream. Because I don't want to preach things out of my head. I want you to see it from the word of God. Are you with me, brethren? I want you, when you make a decision, make it because you have seen it in the word of God. So when you take that decision, you're saying, God, my allegiance is to you as my husband. And I see where it is your custom to go to church on Sabbath. And I want that to be my custom too. And I'm going to pray for you tonight. Maybe there is somebody who want to say, Preacher, thank you for the clarity. It is an area that I have struggled with. And tonight I have seen it in the word of God. And I am prepared, no matter what the cost is, to follow Jesus. How many of you, if that describes you, Raise your hand. Say, preacher, I am prepared to follow the Lord Jesus no matter what. Raise hand. I am prepared to follow Jesus, including keeping his Sabbath. God bless you. I'm going to pray. Can I, you, number of hands raised. Can I?
church you attend there'll be Sabbath keeping up there so starting tonight you have made a commitment God I'm going to start to honor your Sabbath and when family members say why are you going to church tomorrow tell them I'm rehearsing for the new earth in fact, tomorrow when you leave and tell him, I've gone to practice. Will you practice it? I'm rehearsing for the new earth. And they say, what are you talking about? Oh, turn to Isaiah 66 and tell them. Your marriages will die when you die. Your Sabbath keeping will continue in heaven. And if anybody challenge you, tell them. Simple. I want God's practice to be my practice. His custom to be. Me and God can have two different customs. He set the example. Some of you may be at members of another church. Your pastor will call you and say, Why you do that? Tell him, you're not God. You're not God. I am following God. I am following God. I'm following God. When the role is called up yonder, it's His face I'm going to look into. Not you. Not you. Not you. Tell them, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I am following what the word of God says. Are we together? 
I'm going to close with prayer. Is there another? Before I close, is there another? I know this may be a tough subject for you. So boy, I have to go pray hard for you tonight. So I'm going to ask the Bible workers to give you a card as you do. A. I hope you don't get tired of me. You're here. You sign up on every night you didn't get I'm going home and I'm gonna pray you up God because I know some of you will have some fight thing is gonna be easy the devil is gonna fight you but I'm gonna pray you up God put the bands of angels around you give everybody a card 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 can we get some folks around this side Bible workers, can we get some Bible workers around this side, around this side? Give everybody. Can is there anybody else come and join this band? Say, preacher, pray for me. It's a decision I have to make. It's a decision I have to make. Write up your name, telephone number, and address. Your name, telephone number, and address. Your name, telephone number, and address. So those questions, just take the one that applies to you and your commitment to the Lord tonight. Lord, as of tonight, I'm going to keep your Sabbath holy, whatever the cost. May be rough, Lord, but I'm making that pledge tonight. Your custom will be my custom too. After you write up, you just put that X on your paper. Just say, Lord, that's my vote for you. That's my decision. Go ahead and put that X on your paper tonight. I am keeping your Sabbath holy. Work or no work, family or no family. I'm making that commitment to the Lord Jesus. Go ahead and put that X on your paper. I'm saying, God, tonight I am starting to honor your Sabbath. Tonight I'm making a commitment to you. Tonight I am following you, Jesus. Put that X on your paper. Put that X on your paper. Put that X on your paper. And when I see it, I'll pray for you. That God give you the power and the strength to keep his Sabbath holy. Once you have done that, I'm ready to collect my paper. I'm ready to collect my paper once you have done that. I'm ready to collect my paper once you have done that. I'm ready to collect my paper once you have done that. Amen. Once you have done that. Once you have done that, I'm ready to collect my paper.
is our big baptismal service. Can the church say amen? amen. A number of souls have already made that commitment to the Lord. It says, whatever happened, Lord, I'm putting my life in the hands of sweet deliverance. Praise the Lord. I'm going to pray for you now. Let's bow our heads. Oh, my Father, thank you for the word tonight. Thank you for the clarity of your word. Thank you for sending the reminder that old devil is on a rampage, deceiving people. But tonight you have sent light to the people in Portmore and your people have responded. Look at the altar, Jesus. You will see your sons and daughters who step out like champions tonight. They decide they will follow you no matter what the cost. I pray, God, that because they stood up for you, that you will stand up for them. I pray, God, because they have decided to follow you, Jesus,